So um, for everyone in the room, um, if you want to tweet about me, it's, it's always nice. I speak at a lot of uh, different events, and sometimes they have the Twitter feed right behind me, and it says, you know, hashtag Joel sucks, and I look up there, and it's always nice to see that. But if you want to tweet about me, uh, my handle is uh, enjoylifecmo, and LinkedIn, uh, you can connect with me, uh, Joel Wardy. So let me share with you a little bit about Enjoy Life, and it's going to be um, a, a few slides just so you know where we're coming from. We are a small company. Uh, we've been around for 12 years. We're about a $75 million brand. We're based here in the Chicago area. We're out in be beautiful Schiller Park um, by O'Hare. And we're in the gluten-free, allergy-friendly space. Now, how many of you are tired of hearing about gluten-free? Um, right. You know, here's the reality. It's in the news all the time, but there's a really small portion of America that has to eat gluten-free. In fact, only 3 million Americans have celiac disease. And celiac, people that have celiac disease have to eat gluten-free. So it's only 3 million Americans. There's another 22 million Americans who have some type of gluten intolerance. And so when you look at the whole size of the market, the size of the market for gluten-free products is 25 million people. That's it. There's way too many products out there. There's way too many people talking about gluten-free for the size of the market. And that's represented there. What's unique about Enjoy Life Foods is that we serve people that also have food allergies and intolerances. So there's another 75 million people that have uh, some type of food allergy or intolerance. All of our products meet the needs for these 75 million plus the 25 million. So our market is about 100 million people in the United States. And here's what we mean when we talk about free from. We're gluten-free, plus we're free of the top eight allergens. And so the top eight allergens, and the clicker doesn't want to click, there we go. The top eight allergens are wheat, dairy, egg, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish. Those are the top eight allergens. And so we're all of our products, everything we do, we do 43 products, we're free of the top eight, plus we're certified gluten-free. And in addition, we are also non-GMO verified. So when we talk about free from, this is what we're talking about. And as we're talking to our consumers, one of the things that we know is that people who have to eat gluten-free are really devoted to our brand because they have to eat that. And we, we know that the devotion leads to this great loyalty that we've built up over the years. And what we like to say is we are the love mark and trust mark um, for our consumers. By the way, a great book for you to read is a book by a guy named Kevin Roberts who wrote Love Marks. He was the former CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi. And what he really talks about in the book is that anyone can have trademarks, but to create love marks is really something special. So I highly recommend that you read that um, to understand what a love mark is. Okay, so now you know where we're coming from. Now I want you to meet some people. So this is my mother. This is my mother on her 85th birthday. If you look at the cake and you want to know what that cake is, it's a teapot because my mother in her 85 years has never tasted a cup of coffee and she has sworn she never will. She only drinks tea. So that is a teapot coffee cake from, uh, from my, I mean, a, a teapot cake from my mother. So here's the thing about my mother who is now 87. My mother does really one thing social and that is she plays mahjong. Now, if you don't know what Mahjong is, it's a tile game invented by the Chinese, played by Jewish women in the United States, and no one knows why, and it's a whole nother talk, and I'm not going to get into it now. <laughs> but my mother plays Mahjong, and her circle of influence are four people. That's it, the people around the Mahjong table. So, you know, when we're looking at our audience at Enjoy Life, she's not our target market, and we're going to ignore the 85-year-old uh, people. We'll embrace them, we love them. If they buy our products, they're great, but we're not targeting them. Now I want you to meet my niece. So this is my niece, Allison. There's Allison. So Allison is sometimes a vegan and sometimes not. It all depends on the week. She goes back and forth. So here she was, she was playing vegan that time. And not surprising, Allison has 868 friends on her Facebook page. So typical 27-year-old, uh, she loves posting all the food that she eats all the time. And she loves posting where she goes and where she shops. So this was on 7-Eleven Day. 
when um, on July 11, 7-Eleven gave away free Slurpees. She took pictures of her getting Slurpees and posted it. She's ideal. We love people who post what they're eating, when they're eating it, and how they're buying it. So she's a great target market for us. And now I want you to meet someone. Oh, and before I introduce you to the next person, one of the things that Allison does is Allison loves to multitask. So there she is on her phone and on her computer. We're, we're used to these people. OK, now I want you to meet the future. So this is Jackie. And there's Jackie. I was at a trade show, and Jackie walked up to our booth wearing Google Glass. So I'm going to embarrass someone. Anyone here have Google Glass? You know what they call people who wear Google Glass, right? Glass holes. So, <laughs> because you're walking around with this thing on. But Jackie came to the booth, and while she was at the booth, she had information about us, and she's videotaping exactly what I'm saying, all while she's talking to me. So I said, Jackie, I need to meet you. I don't know who you are. I think it's a little bit strange. And so here's Jackie. Her Twitter handle is aging backwards. And if you look at her picture, the reason it's aging backwards is she's 50-something. And she says she's aging backwards. She looks 30-something. Um, she has 13,700 followers. She loves to talk. She has 38,000 tweets at the time. I mean, Jackie is an influencer. And if you go to her website, one of the things that you see is she's on TV, she's in the Tribune, uh, in the paper, and she's on the radio. So Jackie is the future. It's someone who's going to walk up to you totally unexpected. She's connected with all of her followers, and you don't even know that she's connected. That's the future. So here's the first takeaway, is that you have to have a digital first posture. Uh, a lot of people will come to me and they say, you know, how does, how does social or how does mobile fit into your marketing strategy? And it's actually the other way around. That you can't have a separate social or mobile strategy. It's all part of the integrated marketing strategy. And the sooner that you get it from being separated, the better off your strategy is going to be. So one of the things is that if you ignore this digital first posture, you're going to ignore how people shop or how people get information. So we're always focused on digital first. How many of you have heard about the second screen or the third screen? You know, they talk about what's happening when you're watching television. You've got the second screen on your lap. We totally don't believe in this. We think that you've got to change the way you think about second screen or third screen. And what you want to think about, we are in a one screen world philosophy. And what screen is that? It's the screen that happens to be in front of them. So I look around in the room, and I see a lot of you have your, your iPhones out, and you've got your computer on, and maybe you have your iPad next to you. You may start the search on one unit and move to the next unit. You don't care what screen you have in front of you. You just happen to have a screen. So everything that you do has to have that one screen philosophy. And it should be able to move back and forth all the time. Imagine. If you, do, if you go to Amazon, if you're in the middle of an order on Amazon and you're on your computer and then you pick up on it on your iPad, it knows exactly where you are in that order. By the way, here's something that Amazon did, which has nothing to do with this uh, one screen philosophy, but something that Amazon's doing which is really clever. Do you know that today, through um, WhisperSync that Amazon has, that if you buy the audio book and the e-book the e version of the same book, when you listen to the audiobook and then you go back to the ebook, it knows where you are in the ebook from where you were in the audiobook. And back and forth and back and forth. One screen world philosophy. That's where we have to head. So, it ha you know, as I say, it has to be that screen that's in front of you. So, we always say stop worrying about what you're doing in the digital space, and instead, you need to worry about what your consumers are doing in the digital space. Focus on the consumer. So it was, it was said earlier that you really want to think about your consumers or your clients or, or your readers, how they're connecting. Think about what they're doing, and that's how you have to build your strategy. Okay, here's a quick stat for you. 92% of word of mouth happens offline, not online. So think about that. It, it, it happens all the time at the office, right? You go to dinner. You have a great meal, and when you have a great meal, you say to people, oh, I went to this restaurant. It's an offline sharing. So here's another takeaway. What we always try and do is we think digitally, but we act analog. 
We love digital, but the reality is people act analog. Look, you guys are here. Why are you here? Why aren't you just connecting virtually? Because you want to be here. So you're all here analog, but it's a digital conference. So that's one of the things that we're always doing is thinking digitally and acting analog. 25% um, of all consumer searches for company information ends up on consumer-generated content, reviews being the, the best. In fact, one of the things that we know is that consumers don't trust what companies have to say. We have this great, loyal community, but people don't trust what we have to say. They trust what their peers have to say. So 75% of consumers, they, they just don't believe the advertising, and they want to see what other people have to say. And 90% of all consumer decisions are due to a positive recommendation from someone that they trust. And you see it all the time. So, you know, if I'm looking for a product, I know that one of the first places I go, I'll, I'll type in the product and I'll go to consumer reviews. And no matter what the company has to say about the product, if the consumer reviews, if I see two or more negative reviews, I tend not to buy the product. Because, and who knows who these reviewers are? But you trust them because you, you tend not to trust the company. So one of the things that we do in Enjoy Life, and we'll show that in a minute, we provide people platforms to share this information because we know that's what consumers are looking for, that peer-to-peer -peer recommendation. Let me share with you three more sets of stats before we go on. The first one, 81% of consumers receive advice on a product purchase through social media. It's a big number. Here's a second stat. 77% of online shoppers use reviews to make a purchase decision. That's not surprising. And 44% of companies use crowdsourcing to get new ideas. So one of the things that we've done in Enjoy Life, when we're working on packaging, we don't believe in focus groups. We think focus groups are silly. If anyone here is selling focus groups, we believe in them 100%, but we really don't believe in focus groups. What we believe in is using the crowdsource. So sometimes we'll have new packaging, and, we'll have, and we can't decide what should the call out be on the packaging. So we'll put that up on our Facebook page, and we'll have packaging concept A and packaging concept B, and we'll ask people to tell us what they think of each one. And guess what? We get all the feedback we need within 24 hours, and it's great. And they're really our consumers, and we don't have to pay them anything. And we use them for crowdsourcing to get new uh, product ideas as well. Jeff Hazlett, who's the former CMO of Kodak, and by the way, he's got a television show now on Bloomberg TV called The C-Suite. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. But one of the things that he has talked about is that it's not about eyeballs and ears, but it's about winning the hearts and minds of the consumer. And that's what we're working on all the time when we're working at Enjoy Life. So we're the $75 million brand, and we are competing against companies like General Mills and companies like Kellogg's and companies like Kraft. And that is always a challenge for us. So here's what's happened. In 2012, in 2011, we changed our marketing to be very consumer-centric. And so in 2012, our sales went up 41%, and we were a nine-year-old company. In 2013, we went up 40%, and we were a 10-year-old company. And so far this year, we're up 39% in revenues. And we're now at 11 and a half year old company. So, you know, people ask, how do you know that social is working? And what we usually say, because we get cheeky, I don't know, maybe we should stop. But it's working. You can see it because we're seeing it in the revenues. So let's get into that strategy so that we know what it looks like. When we say we're consumer-centric, a lot of companies will talk about that, but a lot of companies are actually marketing department-centric. So we have the consumer in the center, and everything revolves around the consumer. We build loyalty. We still do a lot of print advertising. In fact, this year we're doing more print advertising than ever, but the print is to drive people to our digital. Um, we're going to talk about digital path to purchase in a minute. We do a lot of face-to-face -face experiential marketing. We're going to share with you how many events we do. Um, content is very important, and then, of course, social plays a really big part. But it's all integrated, and it's all with the consumer in the center. So some real quick numbers, a lot of you know this. Uh, not surprisingly, 56% of Americans have a smartphone. We don't care what kind it is. 
The fact is they have one. 75% of Americans do research before they ever walk into a store. And 59% of consumers use mobile to access a retailer website. Mobile is really important to us. 74% of shoppers use your, their mobile phone while shopping. Is anyone here in the retail world? OK, a few people. Um, you know, if you go into Whole Foods, if you go into Whole Foods today and you take a picture, the Whole Foods SWAT team comes down from the rafters <laughs> to tell you you can't take a picture. It's 2014. You want people to share the photos of your store. But they still don't allow you to do it. They get very nervous about it. You can't take pictures in here. It's crazy. So you want people to do that. And slowly, the retailers are getting it. And they're making those changes. So when we're talking about mobile, the first thing is that we make sure that our site um, works on all mobile phones. So we're in the middle of, of uh, building a new site that's going to be launching uh, at the beginning of June. But even our current site, we make sure that it's all mobile. We make sure it's easy to use. We want people to have that ability to access everything that we have on a mobile basis. Um, the other thing that we do is we look for specialty sites. So this is a site called Find Me Gluten Free. Find Me Gluten Free is a gluten free site that helps you find gluten free, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's actually a restaurant site. So we have nothing that we sell on this site but we advertise on this site. So we make sure that the Enjoy Life logo appears on a specialty site, a mobile, and that it takes them right to our mobile site online. And it's a really inexpensive way for us to connect with people that are in our target market. You know, one of the things that we know is, so we talked about the fact that our target market is 100 million people in the United States. What we don't know is where they are. This helps us find them. So in addition to specialty mobile, we really want to get involved in mobile in shopping. So one of the things that we found is that 55% of women use their smartphone while they're shopping. I kind of shared that stat a minute ago. 41% of women want mobile ads that are location-based. We're going to share with you what we did with that information and how we're utilizing that. And then 52% of women use smartphones to share photos of what they purchase. Why are we so focused on women? It's 92% of our consumer base. That's who's shopping for our products. So we're really focused on how they're utilizing mobile and how they're utilizing social um, when, they're, when they're shopping for our products. So when we look at Pinterest, you know, Pinterest on mobile is something that's really important to us because recipes are the number one visited page for Enjoy Life Foods. And we don't sell ingredients. We sell finished product. But they come to us for recipes. Now, we create recipes, we create consumer recipes using our, our packaged products, but because we know that recipes are so important, Pinterest became a really important part of our mobile strategy. Let me talk about Instagram. We're a little bit late to the game on Instagram. We were probably a year and a half behind the times, but we're really focused on how Instagram can make a big difference um, in, in our business. So, Today, we, we have close to 5,000 Instagram users. We have the Enjoy Life Foods Instagram site. And what's really great about Instagram is the way our consumers post. So I want to introduce you to someone. This is someone named Esther Trevino. And when this was first posted, I didn't know who Esther was. I know who she is now. I've told her that I talk about her all the time in, in the presentation. So um, she, she gets it. But if we look at Esther, so Esther has um, in this, when this was posted, she had 137 people that she was following, and she had 90 people following her. And if you see in the middle picture on the bottom, she posted a picture of our chocolate chip cookie packaging. So here's question number one. Why? Here's the answer. Who knows? Right? <laughs> right? I've stopped asking why. Because, I don't know, you know, just think about it. You've got a box of cookies, and someone, something inside of you says, I have to take a photo of this box? <laughs> but she did. And so Esther took a photo of the box of cookies. And then, after posting the box, Esther went hashtag crazy. <laughs> so you know, Esther, she, Esther, you know, hashtag enjoy, hashtag life, hashtag handcrafted. 
By the way, the reason they're handcrafted, we can't afford automation, so we have people putting cookies in. <laughs> and, and so when we created the package, we said, oh, we need to add a word. Huh? Handcrafted people. Yeah. It's, it's there. So handcrafted. <laughs> Han hashtag handcrafted. Crunchy. Chocolate. Chip. Cookies. Allergy friendly. You get it. But here's the other thing that I love about Esther. Now remember, we didn't ask her to do this. This wasn't a contest. She just went ahead and posted and then told us her life story. So here's what she says. Enjoy Life Foods. I always enjoy eating Enjoy Life cookies. Cookie face, happy face, cookie face. <laughs> the chocolate chips ones are death my favorite. I was diagnosed with celiac disease two years ago. I'm now into her medical history. Hip is gone. And since then, I have tried so many gluten-free cookies. By far, the Enjoy Life ones are the best. So many other companies claim to have gluten-free products, but because blah, blah, blah. And Esther just kept talking about these <laughs> chocolate chip cookies. We love Esther, right? I mean, she's telling all of her friends how great this cookie is. And we love her. Now, subsequently, we have met Esther. She came up to her at the trade show, and she says, I'm Esther Trevino. I said, you got to be kidding. <laughs> I said, I know you. And then I told her about this. And so now she tweets about us and everything. We love the people on Instagram. And one of the things that we do is, if you go to our Instagram account, you'll see we very seldom post photos. So we do not use it as an advertising vehicle. We'll post maybe one photo every week or two weeks. We use it as a platform to allow people to share. We teach them how to use their hashtags so that they share with one another. And then we usually comment on what they're sharing so that they know that we're connecting with them. Um, our Facebook page. We currently have uh, over 200,000 Facebook fans. In fact, in the gluten-free, allergy-friendly community, we're either number two or number three, depending on how you look at it, with engaged fans. But here's something that we do that's a little bit unique. We seldom post on Facebook. We respond. So one of the things that we did very early on is when we started the Enjoy Life um, Facebook page is we trained our consumers to share their stories and their thoughts and then we post. Now here's when I want to tell you, you know, this whole idea of small budget. It's not like we have a $100,000 budget. We have a marketing budget of a little bit upwards of $3 million. But you know, in the grand scam of CPG companies, it's small. Our marketing team is four and a half people. So it's four people, and I'm the half because I also do sales. So I'm chief sales and marketing officer. And not to embarrass her, but Casey Moss, who's sitting back there, who won't raise her hand because I'm embarrassing her, Casey does a lot of this execution. So I'm going to look great up here and tell you all the things we do. She's doing all the work, and she will tell you that is true. So, but here's the thing, is that we do this all in-house. We do not use outside PR firms. We don't use outside agencies. We're doing it all in-house. We respond to every single Facebook post every single day. And we do it in-house. And how do we do it? It's just part of our DNA. It's what we do every single day. I am on 24-7. Casey's on 24-7. It's just a team effort. And so, you know, if social's going to work within your company, it has to be within the DNA, because otherwise it's just going to be part of the job. So, you know, what's great about our engaged consumers, I said that we seldom post. We do post once in a while. So here's a post that we made uh, back in November, and we were celebrating our 10-year anniversary. So we, we did a post, and one of the things that we do is we will seed certain words that we know will get a response. So you just heard from BuzzFeed that they, the, the word actually really helped it. Same here. So one of the things that we know is that when they talk about Enjoy Life products, they use the word love. They use the word, you, you know, save my child's life, the phrase. So we use that a lot. And in our post, we just said, hey, share your comments with us as to how we've impacted your life over the last 10 years. And what's great about this is people shared their stories. In fact, in 36 hours, we had 688 stories shared by people. We had 1,100 plus people like it, 51 people shared it, and 688 people told us how much they love what we do. We love that. There is no better place to have this one-to-one -one dialogue with consumers. So one of the things that we never use Enjoy Life for, it's not a megaphone. 
We don't use it to scream out stuff about our company. We use it as a platform to have this one-to-one -one relationship every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And how could it be better to be able to talk to your consumers every single day and to also hear when com consumers don't like us? So here's a post that someone said, I'm a little sad about the new improved taste of Coco Loco. I love them the way they were. I'm not a fan of the new flavor. Actually tastes less chocolatey in my opinion. Sad because you fixed something that wasn't broke. Sad face. We leave that up there. We never take posts down, ever. Eh, maybe if they use a cuss word, but even then it all depends. We don't have enough time today, but one day I will share with you the whole story of how the corn people came after me. And the corn people had a campaign like, Joel is a bad guy, let's go after him. And it was, it was attack of the corn people. It was unbelievable. It's a whole nother story. So we leave all this po uh, positive and negative stuff up there. And if someone says something negative, we want people to react. Let me share with you our Twitter uh, strategy. We have two Twitter accounts at Enjoy Life. So one of them is mine, two official Twitter. This is my, my life as Enjoy Life CMO. And we have a strategic voice for each Twitter account. So the strategic voice for the Enjoy Life CMO is kind of a window into what's happening in the Enjoy Life world from a marketing standpoint. So when I travel for the company, I tell them where I'm traveling. When we're introducing new products, I tease them. That, it's not a corporate voice, it is Joel's voice. And what's different is we have a corporate voice. And so the corporate voice, which has more followers, is a little bit more corporate. Talks about, here's what the company's doing, uh, might talk about events that we're going to be at, and we always make sure that we have two different voices um, to the two different Twitter accounts. And then, a lot of people don't think about this for social, LinkedIn is, a, is an important and growing social part of what we do in our strategy. So, you know, putting updates on LinkedIn, but totally different audience. So who are we going after on the LinkedIn? We might be going after our distributors, our retailers. We're not looking for consumers to link with us necessarily. We're happy if they do. It's a different audience. And so each platform is slightly different. We don't necessarily have the same strategy across all platforms. So where has it gotten us today? So if we look at our quick social stats, maybe. Uh, we have 213,000 Facebook likes. We have um, 60,000 plus newsletter subscribers are all opt-in, 18,000 plus uh, Twitter followers on the two accounts. Pinterest, we still need to work on it. We're under 3,000 and then Instagram, uh, we're probably at about 4,500 today. It grows exponentially. So, you know, we got a lot of work to do, but it's really been paying off for us as you saw in those sales growth. And we measure everything. So we're this tiny company. We do this all in-house. We cannot afford software to measure our effectiveness, so we do it just on a spreadsheet type dashboard. This dashboard is done every single day. Every day, before we go home at night, we know exactly what's happened from social. So you can see, um, blogger reviews, we have a, a whole blogger outreach program that's really important to us. In this month, this is from Monday, April 28th, Total reviews for the past tw uh, seven days, 26. Total reviews month to date, 100. 99 of them positive, one negative. And then we look at how many people visit our website, et cetera. And then um, on the bottom of this, we look at social. So we look at how many followers we have in Joy Life Foods, how many followers we have in Joy Life CMO, Facebook followers, Pinterest, Instagram. We get this dashboard every day. We send this dashboard out to every member of the company every single day. No software, we just have someone spend about 15 minutes gathering this data. So, you know, when you're working on small budgets and you can't afford what the big companies do, it doesn't mean you can't do it. You just gotta figure out the manual way to do it. This has worked really well for us. Let me talk to you about what we're, how we're connecting um, through analog. So we do a lot of events. In fact, this year we're gonna be in 42 states and provinces. Casey's at a lot of them, I'm at a lot of them. We spend a lot of time talking to consumers. In the first quarter of this year, we handed out samples and coupons to over 29,000 consumers. One-to-one, -one, we're able to talk to consumers and share product information with them, and more, than, more importantly, connect. 
that's Casey. So here's what's interesting about this. Here's what's interesting about this is that this is one of the big events that we go to. There's seven of these around the country. It's called the Gluten-Free Allergy-Free Expo, and we are not the lead sponsor of it. So one of our competitors is the lead sponsor, and um, that's because they could pay a lot more money than we did. So we decided, great, we're going to hijack this conference. So one of the things that we did is we spent a little bit of money and we created a step and repeat with the logo of the conference as well as our logo. We created these signs and then we said, all you have to do is take a picture, put it up on Instagram and you can win a gift basket from Enjoy Life Foods. And the conference gave us a 10 foot booth and at every event, this is the Enjoy Life photo booth where people, hundreds of people take their picture, we give them these signs, they can choose what hashtag they want and they post them. So in addition to that, the other ways that we uh, hijack is we give away a free bag. So we're part of the free bag giveaway when they check in. Everyone gets an Enjoy Life bag. And as you can see on the side, it's got all the ways that we want to connect with them. So if I go back just two pictures real quickly, maybe. You can see that even though we're not the major sponsor, you've got all of our bags, you've got our signage, and it's our hashtag, eat freely. So it's working really well for us. And then when you come to our booth, the eat freely hashtag, as well as all the ways you connect, is, is on our booth. All of this stuff costs us pennies on the dollar. A lot less than what we would have to pay for the sponsorship of the event. So we love when we're able to hijack an event like this. So now let's share with how we're using social and mobile and this whole idea of path to purchase when a consumer is going to the store. So we've connected with them. Now what we have to do is make sure that they want to connect back with us and buy our product. Does anyone have Ibotta on their phone? Okay, so a few. So here's something you might want to download Ibotta. It's I-B-O-T-T-A. You can see it up there. What we love about Ibotta is it's a way you can earn money while shopping and it's got a little bit of gamification as part of it. So Ibotta now works with over 50 retailers throughout the country. It lives on your Android or on your iPhone. And when you go into the store, it will tell you that you have Ibotta offers. And in fact, it shows you what those offers are. Nice graphic pictures. So in this case, um, we're in Meyer store and it's saying that you can earn 75 cents when you buy a box of Enjoy Life chocolate chip cookies. You don't get 75 cents off, and instead what it does is it accrues money that you can get in the form of a PayPal check or a gift card. More, the more you buy, the more money you get back. And, and they've added a little bit of gamification. So what they've done is they're asking three questions. Each question is worth 25 cents. Here's question number one. Did you know that Enjoy Life Foods um, is gluten-free and allergy-friendly? You, you read that, you earn 25 cents. Here's question number two. Whoops. Question number two was, when you buy, enjoy life, when you buy gluten-free products, how many do you buy at one time? We get this data. And then question number three is, will you share your thoughts? But here's the amazing thing. So it costs us, the cost of the redemption, 75 cents plus 50 cents. It costs us a buck and a quarter. For $1.25, we're selling a product to the consumer and we're getting data back from the consumer through market research for $1.25 a consumer. In fact, out of all the coupon programs that we are involved in, and we're involved in over 20, Ibotta is our number one redemption coupon site. So a lot of people are utilizing Ibotta. Now, you might ask, how do you know they're buying the product? Because the last step is they have to take a picture of the receipt, upload it to Ibotta, and that's the only way they get their money back. So we actually see on a weekly basis how much product we're selling. At Target, our seed and fruit mix and plentils are being sold as well. So Ibotta is a really important part and it's married gamification, it's married couponing, and it's married social. So when we're talking about social, this is something that we've recently launched. So we worked with Social Toaster to launch a loyalty program. This was launched two months ago. And one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to reward our loyal customers. So Social Toaster um, is our platform. We call our loyal, our, our loyal fans free from agents. In two months, our reach through, 
free from agent program is 2.3 million people. And it costs us a couple hundred bucks a month. So we created this loyalty program. And part of the loyalty program is that people get points as they share um, and get other people to join. And it becomes very much this, this viral program. And you know what are we giving away? This month we gave away 300 tote bags. The tote bags cost us a buck 25. And people are just jumping onto the, the free from program. So loyalty is really important for us. So we always say that you want to stop thinking like a marketing person. You want to start thinking like a publisher and a socializer. We, you know, I mentioned recipes is really important to us. So one of the things that we have is we have a 96-page ebook that is free. It's a recipe book that anyone can download. And we're always creating new recipes because it's the number one visited site on our website. You know, the way that we share stuff and the way that we connect has really changed. So as you can tell, I'm an old guy. And here's the great thing about being an old guy. You remember stuff when? Right now. I mean, eventually I'll lose that memory too, but right now. So this, if for those of you young in the room who don't know what that is, that's the computer room. So we all used to have, in our house, we had a computer room. And this, is, this was the conversation when you were in the house. Are you going to be using the computer room tonight? No, I don't think so. Are you? Yeah, OK. So you had a, you had a like, wait in queue, wait in line to use a computer room. But that's what it used to look like. Everything was tethered to the wall. You couldn't go anywhere. You know, you put that, that AOL disk in there, and you heard that whirring, and, you heard, and then it connected, kind of. Um, and that, that was how we connected. And then this thing came along. And when this came along, people said, you know, wow, I've got the computer in my pocket. And it was just so amazing. And life changed. And then it wasn't too long ago when this happened. And for those of you who, there's a few people in this room who know me and know that I'm this Apple geek. But if you ever want to watch um, the, the Steve Jobs keynote speech when he introduced this, immediately after he introduced it, everyone wrote comments like, why would we ever need this? What are we going to do with this? And now you think, how do you live without it? Now, I, I, I just got to share with you, I was with my younger brother. And my younger brother, he's something special. But I was with my younger brother the other day who still doesn't have an iPad. And he, this is exactly what he said. I don't know what I would do with it. And I just thought, God, who, you know, where did you come from? How are you my brother? So, but if you look at the number, 240 million tablets were sold in 2013. So when you think about you know, your strategy, if you're just thinking about how you're going to connect with people when they're sitting at their desk or when they're sitting at home, um, you've got to be thinking about this one screen world philosophy. How are they using the tablets? Not just where are they using it, but how are they using it? You know, and are they using it landscape? Are they using it, are, are they using it in portrait? Are they using it when they shop? Are they using it when they watch TV? And then you got to think about, OK, what's coming? So is this going to happen? You know, my opinion is it's not going to happen. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but yesterday Google opened up that anyone can buy this now. It's no longer uh, just a select few. It's still $1,500. But the reality is it's too obtrusive. So the technology is there. And there's some real great value to Google Glass, like for technical people who want to have their repair manuals always in front of them. It's great. The average consumer isn't necessarily going to use it. But they are going to use something like it. In fact, wearable technology is so important, it's about to be so important, that very quietly last week, Amazon launched a wearable technology store. And all they sell on that store is wearable technology, because it is where we're headed. So if you think about that, when this comes out, if it looks like this or it looks like something else, but the, the iWatch, how are people going to use it? And how are people going to use it when they shop? And how are people going to use it when they connect to brands? So you know, some of what we're thinking about is while we're working on the current technology, where does this fit into the future? So the last thing that I'll share with you that I think is really important is something that AdAge said. And, and what it said is that you know, when you look at social and digital, it's not just another channel, but it's truly transformational. You know, everything that we're doing, it's completely different. 
And we, as marketers, we need to rethink the entire marketing strategy. And for those of you, and I think it's most of you who are not CMOs yet, I will tell you, you are positioning yourself for a great career. Because the CMOs today, and more importantly, the CEOs today, who aren't focused on this, they're going to be gone. Because the world is changing right in front of them, and they don't know what to do. And so I always commend you for being here, because you're really positioning yourself for the future. So that being said, thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. <laughs> questions, yes. So the question is, um, we mentioned that we're redesigning the website, and you know, what, are, what are we changing? What are we looking at? So the website that we currently have is about four years old, and a lot of people commend us on it and say that it's great. It's full of information. Um, and so there's a ton of information. There's about 176 pages of information, and it's not warm. It doesn't connect. So we, we've built this whole idea of consumer-centric, and the website still is very much the company saying, hey, Look at me, let me tell you all about me. So we're changing not only the way it looks, but we're changing the way that it interacts with our consumer. And then um, it's going to work no matter how they reach us, whether it's mobile or desktop or big screen. Other questions? Yes. Um, yeah, so the question is, how do we build Instagram following? So here's a little secret. Um, I am Instagram boy. This is my responsibility. That's what I do. I do all the Instagram. Um, and um, the way we did it is we, we actually started a year and a half ago, and we started with no followers. And what we did then and what I still do now, I, I don't want to share with you TMI, but my wife um, at night when we're laying in bed, and I know that just became TMI, but <laughs> try not to picture it. It's not pretty. But anyway. So I, I will be on the phone doing Instagram at night. That's what I do. So what we do is I, I look under different hashtags. So I look for you know, hashtag gluten-free, and I go through every photo that's been posted in the last day to see who's posted a picture of our product. And then I click on that product, I connect with that person, and I comment on it. And so that's how we started building our Instagram following, is we just started looking for pictures. And by the way, we, I'm sure there's software that will do this. We just can't afford it. So we still do it manually. And we built up our following. And today, I mean, it's great. We probably add uh, 20 to 30 new followers every single day. And it's just people posting. And it's, it's really started the snowball. But it started very much by scratch. Other questions? Great. Thanks very much. I appreciate it.